Good day, wonderful human. What's going on? My name's Dylan Dance. I'm a physicist from the land down under. Grab a coffee, grab a chair, grab a Vegemite sandwich. Just do it. Grab it. Try it. Grab whatever you want to grab. Let's watch some Big Bang Theory. I guess we'll just bring it up ourselves. I hardly think so. <laughs> Why not? Well, we don't have any measurable upper body strength. <laughs> we don't need strength. We're physicists. <laughs> we are the intellectual descendants of Archimedes. Give me a poke and a lever and I can move the earth. It's just a matter of... I don't nice. have... I don't have the... I'm, I'm still in that. Archimedes would be so proud. <laughs> Archimedes was like... He's kind of known as the father of mathematics. He, uh, you know, discovered a bunch of things in math. Cool guy. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> Yes, but they all involve a green lantern and a power ring. <laughs> Such nerds. I love it. But yeah, physicists don't need strength. Okay. Now we've got an inclined plane. The force required to lift is reduced by the sign of the angle of the stairs, call it 30 degrees, so about half. Exactly. Exactly oh. half. <laughs> exactly half. <yeah. laughs> Let's push. That's exactly how I react when... Do that to me. Okay. See, it's moving. This is easy. It's all in the math. What's your formula for the corner? What? <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised I've never watched this. I'm loving this. I love all these jokes. Um, but I just wanted to say inclined planes are like the bane of a physics major's existence. They're, they're pretty easy, but they're just painful because they're so boring. Great! Was it hard getting up the stairs? No. No? No. No. <laughs> no. Sheldon? I love that. That's funny because one of my good friends that I met in New Zealand Biggest Star Wars fan I've ever met in my life. I remember in our little, uh, in this room we shared, <laughs> I came in one day and right in front of me, like everywhere, it's just Star Wars posters. So Penny's a little messy. A little messy? The Mandelbrot set of complex numbers is a little messy. This is chaos. Excuse me. Have you ever heard of the Mandelbrot set? It's this really cool thing. It's what you call a fractal. Um, if you search YouTube, Mandelbrot set zoom, you will have your mind blown. It's kind of like a proof of infinity, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's kind of like showing that infinities exist in nature. And this Mandelbrot set, this isn't something we invented. Well, it, that touches on the whole, you know, did we invent math or did we discover it? I'm very much in the discover camp. I think we've discovered it. I think there's something very deep about math. Um, and this Mandelbrot set, you zoom into it uh, and it just endlessly changes. You will never come across the same pattern. There's lots of things that look very similar as you go deeper into this zoom, but they're always slightly different. It's so beautiful. Definitely search it. He also said complex numbers. Now I want to tell you something really cool about complex numbers. And you might think, oh, you know, like I don't want to hear boring math, but this is cool. All right. So complex numbers involve an imaginary part and a real part. This imaginary part is exactly like it suggests. It's imaginary. It's not a real thing in reality. However, in quantum mechanics, you know, quantum theory is kind of the best theory we have in physics of nature on the most fundamental level. Well, in quantum theory, we need imaginary and complex numbers to describe reality. What does that mean? What, how, why would we need an imaginary number to describe reality if imaginary numbers aren't real? It's kind of strange, isn't it? So we actually do think these imaginary numbers are real. Cutest little hypoallergenic calicos. <laughs> Leonard, listen to me. I've been thinking about names. I'm kind of torn between Einstein, Newton, and Sergeant Fuzzy Boots. <laughs> Leonard, do you really think you can satisfy your need for a relationship with a genetically altered cat? Maybe. If it's a cute little cuddly cat. <laughs> oh, come on, Leonard. This is sickness. I'm a cat person too. I'll do the talking. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Leonard. This is Sheldon. 
Hello. We're here to pick up Penny's TV. Get lost. Okay, thanks for your time. If I were to give up at the first little hitch, I never would have been able to identify the fingerprints of string theory in the aftermath of the Big Bang. That's so true. Physics is all about not giving up. If you enjoy math or physics, you really just have to be good at not giving up because you're going to want to give up a lot. Um, yeah, and, but I just wanted to say as well, what he's talking about in the aftermath of the Big Bang is we can study the properties of the universe, like what it was like just after the Big Bang by colliding particles together. And that's because when you collide particles together, you can create the conditions that are similar to the, the universe just after the Big Bang, you know, 10 to the negative 30 seconds after, uh, after the Big Bang. So like things like the quark gluon plasma, which is a super cool thing where it was, it was too hot and dense for nucleuses and some other normal atoms to even form. So you, you literally had quarks and gluons and quarks are like uh, the, the fundamental particle that make up nucleuses. You know, they make up protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And uh, gluons, as the name suggests, they kind of like glue particles together. Hello. I caught, uh, he said, krasivaya, which means you're beautiful in Russian. Oh, I haven't. Get used to it. Yeah, I probably... Krasivaya, my subs. Yellow blue tibia. What's his problem? His imaginary girlfriend broke up with him. It's like Been his imaginary there. numbers. This is not anyone's home. This is a swirling vortex of entropy. You guys heard of entropy? It's kind of known as like time's arrow. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a kind of incorrect way to describe it is like, you know, the amount of disorder in a system. If you've seen uh, Christopher Nolan's new film, Tenet, all about entropy and reversing it, and messing with time, but it's a complete mess <laughs> in terms of physics. The hallmark of the great human experiment is the willingness to recognize one's mistakes. Some mistakes, such as Madame Curie's discovery of radium, turned out to have great scientific potential, even though she would later die a slow, painful death from radiation poisoning. <laughs> She's one of the few people to win two Nobel Prizes. She won one in chemistry and one in physics. She is a cool lady. She has a famous quote, um, be more interested in ideas and less, no, be more curious about ideas and less curious about people. Always love that. Valid. I'm just inferring that this is a couch because the evidence suggests the coffee table is having a tiny garage sale. Everyone has the compulsive need to sort, organize, and label the entire world around them? No. <laughs> So they got this kind of wrong. The stereotypical physicist is not, you know, OCD. It's they're chaotic and messy. Look at the most famous physicist, Einstein. He's notoriously messy and chaotic. If you see, have you seen the uh, famous picture of his desk just after he died? Chaos. His books, stuff everywhere. The bookshelves, chaotic mess. Um, here's a famous quote. Uh, if a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind, then what is an empty desk sign off? And you probably heard that Jordan Peterson dude, you know, telling everyone to clean their room. I'm the opposite. I suggest the opposite. I mean, it's I would listen to a psychologist if I were you, but in my opinion, I, I think getting used to the chaos is good because the universe is kind of chaos and it's very hard to find any, you know, uh, the deeper structure and what it all means and no one has obviously but what I'm saying is it's chaos no one knows what's going on so learn to thrive in the chaos it's probably just my nature I'm just a messy guy but anyway I think we might end the video there guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time